Hi there, we're Jonathan Schwartz and GeoNTech, and we're the senior and first author of our new paper, Online Adaptation of Language Models with the Memory of Amortized Context. Uh, so Gion, tell me a little bit about the problem that we're trying to solve and why it's important. So the main problem of our setup is that like the large language models are getting out of date every day. So if if you think about it, all like, new data sets are incoming every day and we have to make the LLM up to date. But this kind of problem is quite hard. Right. Okay. I mean, I think we can all understand how that's how that's a pretty crucial problem nowadays. But you know, presumably people have worked on this before. So what are the techniques people use in practice nowadays? Yeah. So the main like technique they use is called online fine tuning. So they try to update the model parameter with the new data set. But there are several like problems. Like first thing, if you update the model parameter with the new data set, the inevitable forgetting of course on a base of the learned knowledge. So the forgetting, of course. And second thing is like, it's highly sensitive to the online adaptation, like hyperparameter, the, the learning rate. And also it's quite inefficient because you have to calculate the, the gradient every time. And there is one like really nice work, the related work called CAMELS, which tried to use meta learning to update the LLM in a really careful manner to prevent this kind of issues. Right, that makes sense. And I mean, I think, uh, you know, we were big fans of the CAMELS paper and really enjoyed the meta-learning approach. But uh, one of the issues uh, with that particular paper is that it fundamentally relies on optimization-based meta-learning, which can be quite memory intensive and, and, and sort of slow to train. Uh, in addition to this, even though the updating is quite careful, there's still inevitable catastrophic forgetting that occurs, right? And our approach basically was instead of sort of trying to combat catastrophic forgetting is to design around it. And so what we're doing in our paper is a sort of complementary learning system systems approach. And what I mean by this is that we uh, design a kind of system that's shown in gray here around the model that we want to keep up to date, right? So uh, Feta base here is a frozen language model of whatever size that you want. And instead of updating it and dealing with all this kind of nasty catastrophic forgetting, we build a system around it. And this system is taking inspiration from this meta learning based idea in the sense that is trained in such a way that it mimics what we want the model to do at test time. Now at test time, we've got a model it, lots of new incoming documents and we might ask a question about any of these incoming documents. So if we can try and mimic this process of training time, uh, we can avoid, uh, we can do well and avoid the catastrophic, catastrophic forgetting problem. Um, and so what you can see here is that the way this system is trained is that at training time, uh, we we kind of create an episodic structure. This is very typical meta learning and sort of partly inspired by the camel system. Uh, we have a particular question. Uh, we've got an answer that we know the ground truth to at test time, and we have a batch of documents. And now the kind of uh, amortization and aggregation networks uh, operate by uh, transforming the documents into a compact feature space uh, and uh, kind of having a cross-attention aggregation network, which sort of selects one or multiple documents into a compact representation. And now this representation can be passed on uh, with the question to the language model and the language model can then choose to use or not use uh, this additional information based on how useful it is to answer the question. Um, and so you can see that because this model here is frozen, the only catastrophic forgetting that could occur is if we have a large number of chaos context documents and it becomes more difficult to retrieve the correct one. But importantly, uh, you know, this is a lot more controllable and measurable than the forgetting we would get when we update this, uh, this space model. Um, so, Gion, maybe you can explain a little bit more in detail the sort of tricks that we used, uh, especially in terms of memory efficiency that made this possible. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Thank you for the explanation. So I think like we found that there is two techniques are needed for the memory efficiency part. For the first thing is the training and second thing is the for the inference. So for, for the training part, if you like you look at this diagram, if you have a like large batch of doc context document during the training, we need a multiple four pass of the document. So this kind of thing actually requires a lot of memory. So our idea was basically simple. So we just randomly detach all the, just randomly detach the forward pass of the amortization network. And the surprising thing is that this yields a, like, uh, a, um, a, this yields a, like, uh, approximation gradient of the full gradient. So it's relatively, uh, can relatively reduce the memory, but improve the performance. Yeah, and that's an unbiased, for the I think, is that right? Yeah, unbiased gradient is me. Thank you.
And for the second part is for the inference part. So if you imagine we have a like large memory for the inference, then since we're for uh, for the aggregation network, we're using a cross attention layer. So that increases the memory if we have a long context. So we basically we use a hierarchical aggregation. What I mean by that is we have this kind of memory, we divide it into a subgroup and repeat this kind of aggregation again and again so that we don't need the really long context for the aggregation. Right, so that means in practice that the system is relatively affordable to train even with modest resources. Um, and in addition to this, uh, at test time, A, th there's no gradient steps that need to be taken. So that's very attractive because everyone can simply run this system. And in addition to this, uh, this kind of system works for thousands of, of, of documents. And so really kind of uh, improves the online adaptation capabilities of language models. Now, I mean... June, one of the things that I think that a lot of people think about is this sort of reminds us a little bit, in at least in, in, in theory, with retrieval augmentation. Can you talk a little bit about the differences between the approaches? Yeah, thank you for asking that. So our system is very similar to the retrieval augmentation. So actually, we jointly use with the retrieval augmentation, and we have actually found that it improves over the retrieval augmentation. And we also have some benefit over the retrieval augmentation. So if you think about it, like you you have to, when you retrieve a document, you have to give the long document to the LLM. So actually this kind of increases the contact length and also the inference cost increases. But for ours, we can, we have if you have a multiple document, you can just summarize into a really small compact representation to adapt the LLM. So we're much more efficient. And if you think about like multiple documents retrieval, then like the context limit always increases and increases. So that is also problematic. Right. So what you're saying is that because you work on this sort of compact feature space uh, and you have an aggregation network, in theory, you can combine knowledge from many, many documents and then uh, pass that to the network in a meaningful way that doesn't run out of context. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank and. You. and and in addition, I think one thing that's also worth mentioning is because the amortization and aggregation networks have been trained to be sort of suitable for question answering, effectively what we're learning here is to kind of discard unnecessary information, right? So we really kind of uh, pay attention to the sort of things people are likely to ask question about. And once again, this is very directly inspired by the CAMELS paper, which effectively learned a reweighting of the kind of tokens uh, within the documents that that the model should be adapted to, so it sort of takes takes inspiration from that from that work, right? I mean, okay, with with all of that uh, explained, let's talk a little bit about the results. So I think we have uh, uh, one main result that is shown um, all the way uh, in this big table. So uh, Jian, talk us a little bit through what, what are the different methods that we're comparing to, what are the data sets, uh, what are these different models here? Yeah, oh, thank you. So for for the first thing, I will explain about the data set. So for the streaming QA, what I'm, uh, so you have a like stream of news articles. And then after seeing this kind of like 10,000 articles, we will ask a, a question about the news article and you should able to answer this kind of question. And for the baselines, we consider like three times, three types of online fine tuning. So basically what they do is uniform, salient and camels is trying to auto regressively learn on this document and uniform use is using uniform weight for the auto regressive loss and salient is using the saliency for on each token and camels is the meta learned prediction of each token weight. Right. So what you're saying is that the, the uniform technique is, is basically the, the online fine tuning that would be the first thing everyone would try. Okay. Um, yeah. And so you've tried this for a, a couple of different models. Now, how would you say this this uh, works in terms of scalability? Do you think that in principle this should scale to larger models than than the seven billion model? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So I think for other models, like for example, camels, like they have a scalability issue because they use a like second order gradients, which requires quite a loss of memory. But for ours, it's much more efficient. So I think scaling is quite possible for the large models. Right. And I think that uh, you have these sort of two attractive looking graphics. So here, uh, this is the sort of peak memory allocation. And you show that both in terms of uh, memory as well as in the time, you have a, a kind of a strong reduction. Um, and this is, I think, a training time. So I think memory, uh, and learning ha often has- Oh, actually, it's inference time. Okay. Uh, sure. Thank you. Um, 
so I think meta learning often has a reputation uh, of sort of being costly and difficult and doesn't work very well. But in this particular uh, particular setting, this is uh, you know we really managed to achieve good results. Now we spoke a little bit about retrieval augmentation earlier, so maybe you can explain a little bit the experiment that we did in Table Two. Oh yeah, so like as I mentioned previously, we meant uh, like jointly using retrieval augmentation in our system actually jointly uh, improves both uh, improves the performance. So as you can see in the table, like the BM25 is the conventional retrieval augmentation system and jointly using this kind of thing with ours, it consistently improves the performance. Right, so BM25 in this particular setting, you would be passing the full document in the context, is that right? Yeah, the passing the full document, like retrieving one document for uh, the full document. Okay, and in, in, in our particular uh, setting, you've got both the document and the compact representation. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right. And so I think also what's nice to see here is that actually the gap between standard rack and the combination of the technique seems to improve with larger models. So this is, of course, in the kind of time of very large language models, very promising to see. Um, so, I mean, maybe you can explain a little bit like why you think this would work better. I mean, presumably, you know, the retrieval augmentation systems are pretty good at retrieving the right documents. So why would this additional compact information give us additional uh, you know, quality? Yeah, that's a very good question. So our hypothesis is that like our system aggregates from the multiple documents and like there will be some like knowledge sharing or like uh, they're sharing knowledge between multiple documents. And actually what this shows is our system uh, enjoys this kind of shared knowledge to improve further. Right, interesting. Um, and I mean, at the very beginning, when we discussed online fine tuning, we spoke a little bit about catastrophic forgetting. So maybe you can kind of uh, talk a little bit uh, about what this graph is showing and how it's dealing with the catastrophic forgetting analysis. Yeah, so cool. So basically, what this graph shows is the knowledge retention. So after uh, like adapting on a stream of documents, and we are going to ask the previous question. Uh, before adapting the new documents. So like, if you think about it, like if you have a new knowledge, then you will forget the previous knowledge regarding it. And this graph shows that our method is much more better than the online fine tuning method because we are much more robust at forgetting since we don't up update the parameter directly. Right. So you're saying with these other techniques, what could happen is that so as the, as there are more and more kind of new documents coming in, new news articles say, uh, you know, and you keep updating the model, you might overwrite previous information in, in addition to the forgetting you get from the pre-training. Whereas this complementary learning system, the forgetting happens in the sense that it becomes more difficult to retrieve the correct number of documents as you increase the size. But as you can see, it's much it's much more graceful. Great. Um, okay. I mean, this sounds all great. Uh, you know, is this a solved problem or what do you think is sort of suitable for future work? So I think there will be like two possible future work left. Like first it's just transferability. And what I mean by transferability is that like after training this kind of system in a one model, you should able to uh, like train this memory system on a one model, you have you should able to transfer this kind of memory to a different model. This can be like to a bigger model than the size of your original model, or to another like model, like in a different model domain. Right, and so the hope would be to make this uh, as as sort of easy to use as rack in the sense that it works for any techniques, and you can uh, kind of meta learn it using a standard. LLM, but then transfer it maybe to a larger or a different LLM. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and, you know, in addition, sort of the aggregation network, would you think would you say that's the design of that is uh, fixed or, or does it make sense to kind of try and innovate there? I think there will be several like possibility to improve that because like we're using a simple cross attention layer for the aggregation. So like definitely using more better network and better design will definitely improve the performance. Fantastic. Well, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, you can reach both me and Gion. The, the emails are on the paper. Uh, good news as well. The code is available to use, so it's uh, very easy to try out. And uh, thanks very much for paying attention. Thank you.